Hey guys, let's do it. Act two. We're going to talk about the prologue and scenes one and scenes two from act two of Romeo and Juliet today. Well, you are in for a treat today because you're going to see one of the most famous scenes in all of theater today. We're going to talk about the balcony scene. All right. Now, before we get to that, let's do a quick act one recap. All right. So at this point of the story, we know that Romeo and Juliet have met, they have flirted, they have smooched, and they are really into each other. Uh, they would describe it as being in love, and you can describe it as whatever you want, okay? Uh, meanwhile, they have also found out that they are from the opposing families of this feud, Romeo Montague, Juliet Capulet, and they are at this point aren't sure of how the other one feels about the fact that they are in those families. Okay. Uh, right now, Romeo's friends are totally unaware of the fact that he has met Juliet. Romeo's family, with the exception of perhaps the nurse, has no idea that he she is into Romeo. And so right now it's a secret and they have to find out how each other feels. Okay. Uh, Romeo has seemingly forgotten all about Rosaline and um, they are now leaving the party. Okay. So the party just ended. It is still that night and we're going to continue. All right. Okay. Now here we are. We are in act two prologue and enter the chorus. The chorus again is kind of our narrator and it could be one person. It could be many people and they're coming out and they're going to kind of give us a little recap here for the audience at the Globe Theater, which is behind me as you can see all right <coughs> excuse me and here we go now old desire doth in his deathbed lie and young affect affection gapes to be his heir that fair for which love groaned for and would die with tender juliet matched is now not fair now romeo is beloved and loves again alike bewitched by the charm of looks but to his foe supposed he must complain, and she still loves sweet bait from fearful hooks. Being held a foe, he may not have access to breathe such vows as lovers use to swear, and she as much in love, her means much less, to meet her new beloved anywhere. But passion lends them power. Time means to meet, tempering extremities with extreme sweet. Okay, all right, now just... There you go. That's the recap. We have uh, the fact that confirming the narrator is telling us, yes, indeed, Romeo and Juliet are in this love connection. Okay. And they know that they're each other's enemies, but they haven't had the chance to talk about this or see how each other feels. So let's find out what happens. Okay. All right. Wonderful. Now we are diving into scene one. Scene one is going to be a short one. All righty. All right. Here we have Romeo and his buddies. Remember, Benvolio is there, Mercutio is there, a bunch of other unnamed friends, and they are going to uh, be leaving the party. So it says, enter Romeo alone. Can I go forward when my heart is here? Turn back, dull or earth, and find thy center out. Moves away, enter Benvolio with Mercutio. Romeo, my cousin Romeo, Romeo. He is wise, and on my life hath stolen home to bed. He ran this way and leapt this orchard wall. Good call, Mercutio. Nay, conjure too. Romeo, humors, madman, passion, lover, appear thou in the likeness of a sigh. Speak but one rhyme, and I am satisfied. Cry but I me, pronounced but love and dove. Speak to my gossip, Venus, one fair word. What nickname from her purblind son and heir? Young Abraham, Cupid, he that shot so true, when King Cofutia loved the beggar maid. He heareth not, he stirreth not, he moveth not. The ape is dead, and I must conjure him. I conjure thee by Rosaline's bright eyes, by her high forehead and her scarlet lip, by her fine foot, straight leg, and quivering thigh, and the Demesnes that there adjacent lie, that in thy likeness thou appear to us.
Ah, if he hear thee, thou wilt anger him. This cannot anger him. Twould anger him to raise a spirit in his mistress's circle of some strange nature, letting it there stand, till she had laid it and conjured it down. That were some spite. My invocation is fair and honest. In his mistress's name, I conjure only but to raise him up, raise up him. Come, he hath hid himself among these trees, to be consorted with the humorous knight. Blind is his love, and best befits the dark. If love be blind, love cannot hit the mark. Now, will he sit under a medlar tree and wish his mistress were that kind of fruit as maids call medlars when they laugh alone? Oh, Romeo, that she were. Oh, that she were an open arse, and thou a pauperin pair. Romeo, good night. I'll to my truckle bed. This field bed is too cold for me to sleep. Come, shall we go? Go, then tis in vain. To seek him here, that means not to be found. Okay. I could definitely sum up that scene if you'd like. Essentially, Romeo says to himself, oh man, I can't go home not knowing about how my heart feels, meaning how Juliet feels. He need, he's got to talk to Juliet. He's got to know if she still could be into him, even though he's a Montague. So he leaves and he, what I imagine would be comical he jumps over a orchard wall and is now full-on creeping on Juliet. okay he's sneaking into her backyard basically and he's gonna go try to find her and talk to her about his feelings uh, a little note to all of you out there i do not recommend you do this okay this is a story it's fictional if you have strong feelings for someone don't break into their backyard don't go creeping. Uh, find a different way, okay? But who am I to tell you what to do? Obviously, Romeo is guided by his heart and his strong feelings of love. Maybe you have that situation, too, going on. Now, Benvolio and Mercutio have no idea where Romeo went. They think he just ran off. They think maybe he's being lovesick again about Rosaline. Again, they have no idea that he is now in love with Juliet. So this is a good example of dramatic irony. Again, we know information that the characters don't. They are clueless. So he's, they're trying to get him to come back. They're kind of making fun of him a little bit. And that's where we end up. It's a really short scene. It's really just a transition from how we get to the party scene to Romeo and Juliet alone, okay? The boys are all going home. Romeo sneaks off and he's going to be trying to find Juliet and get information from her. Okay. So now here we are in act two, scene two. This is the balcony scene. All right. So if you look behind me, uh, you can see the stage of the Globe Theater. Okay. And on this stage, they actually had a balcony. Okay. So now I'm not sure the specifics. Did they make this balcony? Uh, in order to make this scene awesome? Or did Shakespeare write this scene knowing that he had access to a really cool balcony? I'm not sure. But in any case, uh, this scene is uh, very famous and it's uh, very well known. I know, same thing, synonyms. But regardless of that, uh, what we have to be picturing here, and hopefully I'll be able to provide a visual down here, is that on the balcony is Juliet. All right, she is on her balcony that connects to her bedroom. She's out there. She is full of all these emotions after meeting Romeo, after kissing Romeo, after falling in love with Romeo. And Romeo is going to be hiding down in the bushes, eavesdropping or spying on her. Again, as I just mentioned, I do not recommend you use this tactic when you fall in love, okay? Uh, it's kind of creepy. You know, nowadays, they probably have better security. Um, you know, who knows? Maybe Juliet's family would have a, some cameras back there. He would get caught. And I make no mistake, if Romeo does get caught by the Capulets, I mean, they're going to kill him. They, their families hate each other. And if they see a Montague sneaking around in the Capulets' backyard, oh, man, that would not go well. Okay, so let's read it. And then we'll talk about it, and then we'll be done for the day, okay? 
All right, and then we'll continue tomorrow. All right, anyway, here we go. Romeo returns. He jests at scars that never felt a wound. Now Juliet appears in the balcony and Romeo is seeing her. And this is a great example of a soliloquy. Romeo is saying his thoughts out loud so that way the whole audience knows how he's feeling. All right, here I go. But soft, what light through yonder window breaks? It is the east and Juliet is the sun. Arise, fair sun, and kill the envious moon who is already sick and pale with grief, that thou, her maid, art far more fair than she. Be not her maid, since she is envious. Her vestal livery is but sick and green, and none but fools do wear it. Cast it off. It is my lady. Oh, it is my love. Oh, that she knew she were. She speaks, yet she says nothing. What of that? Her eye discourses. I will answer it. I am too bold. Tis not to me she speaks. Two of the fairest stars in all heaven, having some business to entreat her eyes, to twinkle in their spheres till they return. What if her eyes were there, they in her head? The brightness of her cheek would shame those stars. As daylight doth a lamp, her eye in heaven would through the airy region stream so bright that birds would sing and think it were not night. See how she leans her cheek upon her hand? Oh, that I were a glove upon that hand, that I might touch that cheek. I me. Hope you guys really appreciate my uh, Juliet voice here, okay? She speaks. Oh, speak again, bright angel. For thou art as glorious to this night, being o'er my head, as a winged messenger of heaven, unto the white upturned wandering eyes of mortals that fall back to gaze on him, when he bestrides the lazy puffing clouds and sails upon the bosom of the air. <sighs> oh, Romeo, Romeo, wherefore art thou, Romeo? Deny thy father and refuse thy name, or, if thou wilt not, be but sworn my love, and I will no longer be a Capulet. Shall I hear more, or shall I speak at this? Tis but thy name that is my enemy. Thou art thyself, thou not a Montague. What's a Montague? It is neither hand, nor foot, nor arm, nor face, nor any part belonging to a man. Oh, be some other name. What's in a name? That which we call a rose, by any other word, would smell as sweet. So Romeo would, were he not Romeo called. Retain that dear perfection which he owes without that title. Romeo, doff thy name, and for that name, which is no part of thee, take all myself. I take thee at thy word. Call me but love, and I'll be new baptized. Hence first, henceforth, I never will be Romeo. <gasps> what man art that? Thou that, thus bescreened in night, so stumblest upon my counsel. By a name, I know not how to tell thee who I am. My name, dear saint, is hateful to myself, because it is an enemy to thee. Had it written, I would tear the word. My ears have not yet drunk a hundred words of that tongue's uttering, yet I know the sound. Art thou not Romeo and a Montague? Neither, fair maid, if either thee dislike. All right, that's a good place to pause, okay? Went through a lot of stuff there. Uh, let's kind of go back to page one and break this down a little bit, okay? All right, so Romeo, he is full-on creeping on Juliet. He is spying. He is invading her privacy, okay? However... He is uh, full of emotions, and he's telling the audience how he feels. All right, so here we go. He's got a lot of stuff going on here. Uh, let's talk about some of it, okay? Let's see. He sees Juliet appear on the balcony through the window, and he says, oh, it is the east, and Juliet is the sun. All right, so comparison. He's comparing Juliet to the sun. What do we know about the sun? It's hot. 
It's bright. It lights up the entire world. In fact, the entire solar system revolves around the sun. That is how important Juliet is to Romeo. And he says, oh man, the moon is envious of Juliet's beauty. She is so hot that the moon, who is also bright and in the sky, the moon is jealous of her, okay? Um, what else, okay? She is my lady, it's my love. She's, he's telling us how much she, he cares about her. Um, he says that her eyes are two of the fairest stars in all of the heavens. They twinkle, uh, her cheek is bright, uh, basically lots of comparisons comparing her to things that are beautiful, bright, and we really see how beautiful Romeo finds Juliet. And what else? Okay, then she leans her cheek upon her hand. Okay, so I tried to do this when I was reading to kind of really give you a good uh, visual. She goes, <sighs> okay and when <laughs> she does that Romeo says oh I wish I were a glove on her hand so I might be touching her okay this could be very romantic this could be very sweet um maybe you're kind of creeped out by it I don't know I mean Romeo and Julia it's supposed to be he's saying it in a very poetic way so I mean I guess it's better than someone texting you Oh, I wish I was creepily touching your face, right? Uh, in any case, I'll leave that up to you to judge it if you find this to be appealing or not. Okay, so he is listening and she's, he says, oh, speak again. T like, talk to me. Again, he's eavesdropping. And now we get to some good stuff. We begin to find out how Juliet feels. We know how Romeo feels because he just told us. Now we're going to find out how Juliet feels because she is speaking to herself. She does not know Romeo is listening. Romeo, Romeo, wherefore art thou Romeo? All right, now this is one of the most commonly confused phrases in all of literature. Um, nowadays, when we hear where or wherefore, we think it means where, like, Romeo, where are you? No, 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 no. Wherefore means why. Okay, so we see that here in the translated version. Why? She is asking, why do you have to be Romeo? This awesome, hot, cool guy who I just kissed. Why does he have to be Romeo? Why does he have to be a Montague? This is terrible news that I am in love now with the one person or the someone from the one family that I'm not supposed to be with. Okay, and he says that, she wants Romeo to deny thy name, like say you don't care about being a Montague, okay? Or just tell me you love me and I'll say I'm no longer Capulet. So we know now for sure that Juliet is into it still. She still wants to be with Romeo. Romeo, like, ooh, that sounded good. Should I come out or should I keep listening? He keeps listening. Again, kind of a creep. It's like reading someone's... uh cell phone you know like you stole their texts or their diary or you know you're spying on them creepily from the bushes okay anyway she continues she says it's only the name that's her enemy she doesn't care that she that he's a montague what is a montague anyway it's just a name names don't mean anything it's not who he really is uh this is another famous line that which we What's in a name? That which we call a rose by any other name would smell as sweet. If you called a rose anything like a flankadunk, it would still be the same thing. The name is arbitrary and meaningless, okay? So all she cares about is who Romeo is, which is a great lesson. We shouldn't care about someone's name or their family or where they're from. If we love them for who they are, that's great, all right? So then Romeo gets so excited, he jumps out, probably terrifies Juliet, and says, oh yeah, baby, <laughs> guess what? I don't care about being Romeo either. Call me anything you want. Okay, and she's a little creeped out. Oh my gosh, who's listening to my counsel? And 
basically he says, I don't care about our names either. All right, now let's continue. All right, back here. Keep reading. Juliet. How camest thou hither? Tell me, and wherefore? The orchard walls are high and hard to climb, and the place deaf, considering who, the art, who thou art, if any of my kinsmen find thee here. When love's light wings did I o'erporch these walls, for stony limits cannot hold love out, and what love can do that dares love attempt, therefore my kinsmen are no stop to me. If they do see thee, they will murder thee. Alack, there lies more peril in thine eyes than twenty of their swords. Look thou but sweet, and I am proof against their enmity. I would not for the world they saw thee here. I have night's cloak to hide me from their eyes. And but thou love me, let them find me here. My life were better ended by their hate than death prorogued wanting of thy love. Okay? Juliet is concerned. Dude, why are you here? How did you get over these walls anyway? And also, guess what? If anyone in my family sees you here, you're a dead man. I don't want the guy I love to be dead. Romeo, he doesn't care about this stuff. And we're already seeing how reckless he is. Girl, with the power of love did I climb these walls. I don't care about your, uh, your family trying to kill me. All I care about is being with you and seeing you. There's a kind of sweetness to it, but also definitely a recklessness. Definitely uh, not thinking things through, okay? Again, these are young teenagers. Rome, Juliet's not even 13. We never get Romeo's exact age. It's kind of debatable, but he's probably a few years older than Juliet for sure. Um, but either way, they're young, and they aren't really thinking of the consequences enough. Or at least Romeo isn't. Okay. Juliet, let's continue. By whose direction foundst thou out this place? By love that first did prompt me to inquire. He lent me counsel and I lent him eyes. I am no pilot, yet thou as far as that vast shore washed with the farthest sea. I would adventure for such merchandise. Thou knowest the mask of night is on my face. Else would a maiden blush repaint my cheek. For that which thou hadst heard me speak tonight. Fain I would dwell on form, fain, fain deny what I have spoke, but farewell compliment. Dost thou love me? I know thou wilt say I, and I will take thy word, yet if thou swearest, thou mayest prove false. At lovers' perjuries they say, Jove laughs, O gentle Romeo, if thou dost love, pronounce it faithfully, or if thou thinkest I am too quickly won, I'll frown and be perverse, and say thee nay. So thou wilt woo, but else not for the world. In truth, fair Montague, I am too fond, and therefore thou mayest think my behavior light. But trust me, gentlemen, I'll prove more true than thou, than those that have more coin to be strange. I should have been more strange, I must confess. But thou had, but that thou overheardst ere I w was ware, my true love's passion. Therefore, pardon me, and not impute this yielding to light love which the dark knight hath so discovered. Okay, so here we see Juliet is concerned a little bit. Now, she's concerned because she can't really know for sure if Romeo is being honest with her. Romeo, on the other hand, knows definitely how Juliet really feels because she declared it privately and when she thought she was speaking to herself. So Juliet's basically saying, okay, you know how I really feel, but I only know what you're telling me. It's kind of not fair. In a real relationship for you guys out there, I'm guessing right after you meet someone, you don't just go up to them and say, I love you so much. I want to be with you forever. You'd probably be coming out a little strong. If you meet someone at a party and then they immediately start texting you nonstop. Girl, you're the best thing ever. I love you so much it might freak you out a little bit and Juliet's also a little bit afraid of that if you think I came on too strong like I'm sorry but you were eavesdropping on me okay I didn't mean to be that way but it's kind of your fault all right so she's a little concerned she doesn't know exactly how Romeo feels she kind of have her has her heart out in the open now so Romeo is going to try to convince her that he is sincere 
he says, Lady, by yonder blessed moon I vow, that tips with silver all these fruit tree tops. Oh, swear not by the moon, the inconstant moon, that monthly changes in her circle orb, lest that thy love prove likewise variable. What shall I swear by? Do not swear at all, or if thou wilt, swear by thy gracious self, which is the god of my idolatry, and I'll believe thee. Okay, so Romeo's like, girl, I promise on the moon. Juliet points out that the moon is always changing, so maybe that's not the best thing to swear by. Then she says, maybe you should swear by yourself, because I love you so much. Well, okay. Let's keep going. They're... Now, at this point, they both have declared their love for each other. Now, let's find out what they plan on doing with this love, okay? If my heart's dear love, well, do not swear. Although I joy in thee, I have no joy in the, of this contract tonight. It is too rash, too unadvised, too sudden, too like the lightning, which doth cease to be. Ere one can say, it lightens, sweet good night. This bud of love by summer's ripening breath may prove a beauteous flower when next we meet. Good night, good night, as sweet repose and rest come to thy heart as that within my breast. So Juliet wants them to take something slow. She says, do not have our love be too much like the lightning. Hot, fast, and intense, but then gone in a flash. Instead, she wants their love to be like a flower. You know, give it time, water it, let the sun come down on it, and over time, it will grow into a beautiful thing. So she wants to take things slow. Romeo does not want to take things slow. He wants things to move very quickly. He says, oh, wilt thou leave me so unsatisfied? What satisfaction canst thou have tonight? The exchange of thy love's faithful vow for mine. Vows? Hmm. Vows, marriage, wedding, vows, marriage, wedding. Oh, he wants to get married right away. Dang, that is fast. Although, in fairness, uh, at least he met Juliet before wanting to marry her, unlike Paris. Okay, let's continue. I gave thee mine before thou didst request it. And yet I would it were to give again. Wouldst thou withdraw it? For what purpose, love? But to be frank and give it thee again. And yet I wish but for the thing I have. My bounty is as boundless as the sea. My love as deep. The more I give it to thee, the more I have. For both are infinite. The nurse calls from within. I hear some noise within. Dear love, adieu. Anon, anon, good nurse. Sweet Montague, be true. Stay but a little. I will come again. Juliet leaves. Oh, blessed, blessed night. I am afeard. Being in night, all this is but a dream. Too flattering sweet to be substantial. Juliet comes back. Three words, dear Romeo, and good night indeed. If that thy bent of love be honorable... Thy purpose marriage, send me word tomorrow by one that I'll procure to come to thee. Where and what time thou wilt perform the rite, and all my fortunes at thy foot I'll lay, and follow thee, my lord, throughout the world. Madame! I come anon, but if thou meanest not well, I do beseech thee. Madame! Okay, the important thing from this page, Juliet says, hey, Romeo, if you're being legit with me, if your love is honorable, okay, if your intentions are true, and you're not just trying to be physical with me, but you want real love, if you really want to get married, then tomorrow, send me word and tell me where and when to come. So right now, the plan is for these two people who just met at this party tonight, the plan is to get married tomorrow even though their families hate each other and are always fighting and want to kill each other, they're just going to get married. Okay. They'll figure that all that out later. Don't worry about what's going to happen. Uh, we'll figure that out later. Okay. That's the plan. By and by I come 
to cease thy strife and leave me to my grief. Tomorrow will I send. So thrive my soul. A thousand times good night. Juliet leaves. A thousand times the worse to want thy light. Love goes toward love as schoolboys from their books, but love from love toward school with heavy looks. Juliet comes back. Okay, so at this point, it kind of makes me feel like in those TV shows you might have seen uh, where people are on the phone and they're always like, you hang up. I love you. No, you hang up. I love you so much. And then they don't hang up. It's a common comedy bit in sitcoms. So, and then eventually a friend comes by and just hangs up the phone aggressively. They just keep saying goodbye. They don't want to say goodbye. Uh, just a lot of I love yous and goodbyes here. Okay. So let's read them. Hist, Romeo, hist. Oh, for a falconer's voice to lure this tasseled gentle back again. Bondage is hoarse and may not speak aloud. Else would I tear the cave where echo lies and make her airy tongue more hoarse than mine with repetition of my Romeo. It is my soul that calls upon my name. How silver sweet sound lovers' tongues by night, like softest music to attending ears. Romeo, my nice. What o'clock tomorrow shall I send to thee? By the hour of nine. I will not fail. Tis twenty year till then. I have forgot why I did call thee back. Let me stand here till thou remember it. I shall forget to have thee stand there, remembering how I love thy company. And I'll still stay to have thee still forget, forgetting any other home but this. Tis almost morning. I would have thee gone and yet no further than a wanton's bird that lets it hop a little from his hand, like a poor prisoner in his twisted gyves, and with a silken thread plucks it back again, so loving, jealous of his liberty. I would I were thy bird. Sweet, so would I, yet I would kill thee with much cherishing. Good night, good night, parting is such sweet sorrow that I shall say good night till it be morrow. Okay, lots of goodbyes. Yes, it would be very sweet to say, sweet sorrow to say goodbye. I don't want you to leave. Sleep dwell upon thine eyes, peace in thy breast. Would I were sleep and peace, so sweet to rest. Hence I w will I go to my ghostly friar's cell, his help to crave and my dear hap to tell. All right, act two, scene two, done. Yes, okay. Uh, so Juliet is going to send someone, it's going to be the nurse, tomorrow at 9 a.m. to talk to Romeo to find out where and when they're going to get married tomorrow. Okay, it's moving fast. Uh, Romeo is going to the ghostly friars. So this is the, a religious person, a priest, a monk, a minister, a friar, okay? A padre, whatever you want to call him. So he's going to the friar's place, the church, his house, whatever. And he is going to ask the friar will you marry Juliet and I? So we'll see what happens when the friar, what the friar says. We'll see what happens when the nurse goes to find out where and when they're going to get married. Lots of stuff is going to happen. Um, the action is about to get turned up a little bit, but we have now seen Romeo and Juliet do in fact love each other, despite the fact that they are each other's enemies. They are moving very quickly. They need to get married tomorrow. No, they haven't talked to their parents. No, they don't know how anyone's going to react about the whole feud thing. No, they barely know each other, okay? They've known each other a few hours at this point. And that's about it, okay? So I was moving quickly, and uh, I hope you're into it. And let's find out what happens, all right? Anyway, have a great day. Uh, much love to you all. Peace out. Keep it real. And I will talk to you later. Okay. All right. Take care. Bye-bye.